So, what we are going to do, we're going to do some track planning and some track laying and some layout design today. And this is our area that we're working with. Alright, so here's the thing. Uh, a lot of you guys are, are using CAD programs in making complicated or perfect layout design. And then you go to put it into practice and it doesn't work. And there is a reason for that. When you get down to the real space, it turns out things aren't exactly the way they are in, the, in your design. So now the way I do it is this. I have a concept. This space I'm showing you right here, I know that I need to have a yard here. There is a yard and where these boxcars are, there is a large industry, which is going to have, looks like it's going to be about three, maybe four tracks across. So it's going to have a huge capacity, a whole lot of cars. Then there's got to be a, there's got to be a yard right here. Switch out trains for the rest of the layout. Got a problem. I get to this corner here. We got to go around a sharp corner into a narrow space. And I need to figure out what I'm going to do here. Limits my yard space. I have 12 feet. That's what I'm working with is 12 feet. So here's what I want to I want to put out. See this right here? I was sorting track. So here's a, in the basket I, I found I had 15 inch radius. Then I had some 18 inch. and some 22. And I was laying it out here to sort it out, and I'm like, you know, I always wanted a curved yard, and everybody said it can't be done. So, you all know me. If they say it can't be done, I'm going to be the guy that does it. Then I was looking at some statistics from some big layouts that were on a layout tour, and they all brag about how big their minimum radius is. You don't hear anybody talking about having small minimum radius. So this is 15. Okay. Now, in the past, when guys first started out, there was such a thing as 12-inch radius. And if you ever seen the 040 steam engine, which used to be super popular, the 12-inch radius was in use. So, the way I do this, I get a concept. I visualize the fact that I want a yard. I describe to myself what I want that yard to do. This yard needs to be able to sort cars to go out to industries. One of those industries is located in the yard. I also want this yard to go around the corner. So on purpose, and because no one else is doing it, I'm going to make very small minimum radius. Like, oh no, but then you can't use the yard, right? You can't switch on it. Oh, guess what? There will be a rule. But you can't switch on the tracks. All right, someone's going to figure it out. Someone will not know that rule. Someone will figure out you can't run two trains across these tracks at one time. But I have a ton of cars like this. All of them will work just fine in 15-inch radius. And I have small switch engines that can switch them. That's not a problem. We're going to do that. Not only that, as you can see, I do not use foam. I use cork. I use cork on top of particle board, and I can nail into it. When I make a mistake, which I do, when I change my mind, which I do frequently, I also don't solder my rail joints. As you know, I use, see that greasy stuff that's called OxGuard? It's an antioxidant. That's what I use, and I don't have any track problems whatsoever. But if I change my mind... Or I don't like that switch arrangement, and I build a new one. I take it out and I put in a new one. It makes it real easy to um, work on my track plan. Because in truth, here it is, John Allen. Nobody disputes he's probably the all-time master of layouts. This is the way he did it. If you don't have this book, you should try to get it. You want to see how he did it. This is how he did it. He sketched. 
He built some stuff. He sketched some more. He built some more. There's a modern drawing of what his layout is. And he sketched some more. He was also an armchair modeler, and that's a, that is also a hobby unto itself. Then we've got John Armstrong, also undisputed master of the hobby. What you need to know is all contained in this box on page three. That right there is what you need to know about basic layout design. You start with that. Understand that box. Read it. Practice it. And then you'll know how to do this. So I'm not laying down a design for these tracks. I'm going to fit them in. Test them. Refit them. Retest them. Redo them until it is the way I like it. And that's how I practice. I know I want a yard. I don't need to make a super detailed version of it. I want to fit the track first. Once I fit the track, and as you can see, I already have, I use cork squares, because as you saw in here, in John Allen's book, when we make a modern drawing of it, like this, that one has the squares removed, but um, let's see if we can find them here. So in John Armstrong's book, you can see all the track plans are in those squares. Cork squares are those squares. So then I can make my drawing of this and I can adjust from there. Now I got one other guy out here. Lynn Westcott, the other undisputed master. In fact, John Allen by Lynn Westcott, his friend Lynn Westcott. Lynn Westcott is the guy who did wiring. These three books, when you see them at a train show, get these in your library. This one. This, this was three dollars and at the train show it was like a dollar fifty now there's a bunch of wiring in here that doesn't apply today because Lynn Westcott was a master of the type of wiring used before DCC but try googling that ammeters and voltmeters you are not gonna find anywhere Anywhere else that I know of in my extensive library other than this book that gives you a proper description of how to do ammeters and voltmeters. Unless you want to buy that equipment, but you know, you guys, if you do DCC, you've heard about stall current. Wouldn't you much rather have a nice setup at your test track to test the stall current? This is where you find it. There's also entire chapters in here. Um... There's one specifically about switches. Remote control of turnouts. Okay, remote control of turnouts? That hasn't changed. Just because you go and buy a, a bullfrog turnout control doesn't mean that you shouldn't know this stuff. This will help you tremendously. If you want to do... If I have a... See these turnouts back here? Right now I want to do hand. But getting way back here, I have to bend over to reach this one. At some point, I'm going to do some kind of under layout remote control on those. And this is where I'm going to find out what I want to do. I don't want to spend 30 bucks per turnout. Not when, not when high torque motors are less than a buck a piece. It's right there. That's what we got to do. That's where we're going to start. We're going to start laying down some track. And we're going to start with this industry. We're going to get this industry in place. And we are using... John Armstrong's page three square here. That's how we're going to do this industry. We're going to lay this down. Then we're going to move on from there and we're going to start laying down a yard to support this industry. We're going to get connected to it. And we're going to get some kind of operational yard in here so we can start testing it. All right, that's all I got for you for now. We'll come back and we'll check out after I got some more track down.